Hi and welcome back and um, it's been a kind of a strange week. I've got this lens I want to show you but I just want to do an update first. I've been away and I've been in Cornwall and I've had some work I've been having to do out there. So I was away for about five days and yeah I was very busy but I managed to get two rolls of Colour C200 film off it's the, uh, the Fuji. Well it's not quite Fuji film but I'll explain that in the next video. So I've done those, they're away with the processors now and I'm just waiting for them to come back and then I'll do a video and I've got video footage of me while I'm there. Um, I was I was away working on a documentary, um, some interviews and stuff, so that's why I was there. But while I was away, I bid for this lens on eBay and it's a 75 to 150 Zwico zoom lens and it kind of fits into both my categories of both being digital, for digital use, and for my um, Olympus OM20. I bought it for the OM20, however, I do have a adapter that puts it onto my Sony camera, which I'm filming on now. So what you're gonna see now is me going through a few photographs I took with this lens adapted to the Sony, and I was quite surprised. I wasn't expecting much, I mean, the, the most incredible part about this, this lens only costs 10 quid. It's an f4 across the, across the zoom range, which is quite good. So sometimes, mostly you're looking at 4, 5, 5, 6, but this is f4 across, across the zoom range. Um, if you've used a zoom lens like this on a digital SR, they, they are an absolute pain to focus. And I know I'll get much better results when I get this on my Olympus and you can see the split finder. Um, which is much more useful than what you see through like the Sony. So um, anyway, so you're going to have a look at a few photographs now. I'm going to go through them with you and you can see just how good this lens is even on a modern camera. I was, I was really surprised and the fact it only cost me 10 quid. Okay, so here are the images I took this afternoon. It was really dull and cloudy. It had been raining and um, I've just got an, a few shots to show you that I want to go through. Um, it's so easy to make a really good out of focus shot with one of these lenses, especially as I say with a DSLR. You can't really see, you can't really get it. It's really difficult to see how to focus properly. Um, but I did manage to nail it on the next shot. And um, I, I'm starting to do this method more frequently rather than just having the photographs on the actual timeline of what of my edit. I'm finding I can actually zoom in better and, and give you a better perspective of the type of um, shots I'm doing. Um, so you can see it's not too bad. The ISO was quite high. I think it was about 6,400. So you're going to get a little bit of noise because of that as well. Now, this one, I was actually meant to be focusing on the actual um, clock face. But you can actually see I actually got it sharp for the tree. And that wasn't the, des the desired effect. I actually wanted to get the uh, the, the actual clock face. Um, but it shows that it can be really quite sharp. Let's go to the next one. And this time I'm actually just slightly refocused. And it's a tiny, tiny, tiny adjustment to get that. Whereas a, a modern AF camera would just go bang straight on it. So if I just go in a little bit on this. You can see that's not really bad. For, that's not bad sharpness. And it was at the 150 mil end when I did this. So really, you think about a, a lens that was made in the early 1980s. It's actually really, really quite sharp. Now, as I say, I'm not going to be using this really on my digital camera. I just use them to test them out before I actually use them on my film camera because I can't wait for a film to come back from the processor. So I put them in my or on my uh, Sony and then try them out first. And you can see it's come out quite nice so let's go for a few more um, this one's kind of weird it looks kind of soft down here and there's two of these and I think they're both pretty much the same and um, I don't know if I now the focusing quite on this it looks it looks kind of sharp enough but when you zoom in you can see it starts to really really soften up so I don't honestly know what that is whether that's having thought about it now it could be camera shake because my shutter speed was one two hundredth of the one two hundredth of the second, but if you think about it, with it zoomed in at one hundred and fifty mil, and without the modern technologies, it, it is so easy to get a camera shake on a, on a zoom lens, especially like an old classic one like this. Um, I took this one of the um, St Paul's Church, and I was looking from the river. It's a shot I've done many times before, 
and again it looks it's not too bad i mean you considering this is just probably the size of a you know size of a wall the way i've zoomed it in it's not come up too bad at all uh, you can see the four miles an hour sign here and that, that looks okay it's not brilliantly sharp but still it's still quite good but there are a couple of shots that are really really stonkingly sharp and i'm just going to show you those in a second okay this one again i was just trying to focus and get my exposure right because obviously you have to work the camera manually and uh, this one just didn't just didn't come out at all well um it's completely out of focus completely soft and uh, now this one i'm really really pleased with this this is a uh, con this is a egyptian goose and um for some reason we've got some of them in bedford i think there's two pairs now there's a baby here and here's a little story a little side story that apparently um i didn't know this they actually had 10 of them and nine of them have been killed by swans i don't know how true that is but this is what people have told me so that was the last one left i think he's getting a bit bit too big now so to be gobbled up by a, a swan um so if i zoom in you just see how sharp that is and look at the feathers you can see all the detail in the feathers and stuff and in the um the face and the beak and the eyes so it can it can really really focus sharply and it's getting it just right okay so and again this one out of focus completely um, I barely moved, I barely moved at all when I took this second shot. Okay, so this one is, is kind of like this one. Now, I don't know if he's eyeing up the baby goose as a, after after just what I told you. But again, this one, I literally, I didn't know what I was, I was literally trying to focus on it. And I didn't realise just how sharp this one is. And this would have been at 150 mil. So you can see, it's not too bad at all. For I mean, you've got to remember this, this, you know, this, this lens is like 40 years old so it's really really quite impressive and and for only a tenner as well okay okay so now this is the actual test itself for the lens this one is at 70 mil at f11 and the reason i know that is because the next one is at f4 and you can see the depth of field drop off there so you can see it's sharper here um but if when you go in you can just see just how sharp that is. I mean, that's I mean that's really really good, you know. Um, and if I come back out, so that is at f11, and this one is at f4, and they're both at 70 mil. There you go. So it's still it's I don't know it's really really quite sharp. I'm really really quite pleased with that. Pleased with both both of them. Uh, that one sorry that one's the yeah, that one's the f um, f4. And then I did it at 150 mil, and that one is at f4, and that one is at f11. You can see the difference in the um, the sharpness of the uh, the poles in the background. They change quite dramatically. You can see the focus difference for the depth of field. So there's one and two. Um, so if you zoom in on that, you know, I mean that isn't bad at all, is it? I mean, look at that. That's I mean. <laughs> I'm really, really impressed. So let's come back out and let's go to, this is just the last shot I took of the day. It's looking down the river to the butterfly bridge and I think I've got some dust on my sensor, which I need, so I need to clean the sensor. And one of them, so that one's at 150 and then the previous one is at 70. Now, make up your own conclusions on this but i love this lens it cost me 10 pounds so i'm really really pleased with it and um yeah i think the zrico lenses are, are really really good and i'm looking forward to going out with this lens on my olympus home 20 and getting some really really stonkingly sharp shots with it anyway i'll see you in the next video